The past six months have been extremely challenging for the automotive industry, with a dramatic fall in sales because of the unprecedented disruption to our lives. For once, the entire globe has been affected, not least Europe, which saw a 50% fall in automotive online traffic in just 30 days between March and April this year. Now, as economic activity returns, some governments are helping their car industry. We have seen an increase of 20% in traffic to electric vehicles in France and Germany. But there are other, more fundamental shifts. The way people buy cars is changing and mobile now account for a staggering 65% of all automotive digital activity. Digital showrooms are suddenly the focus of attention and brands are flocking to establish a personalized video relationship with the customers. Sofus 3 has a unique and independent view, which helps us to forecast the direction of the market, a reverse funnel if you like, which reveals how tomorrow's consumers will shop in digital. So the question for us all is, will we see a V-shaped recovery, an L-shaped recovery, or a W-shaped recovery? In this session, my colleagues and our special guest will use insight from our eData Exchange platform to provide answers to this question. recap of the automotive year so far. A year in which COVID-19 has disrupted the sector not only economically, but in the whole way that it does business. At Sofus 3, we follow three sets of data with particular interest to measure performance. Online traffic to car brand sites, car brand marketing activities, and finally, vehicle registration outcome. And this is what we saw in Q1 2020. Visits were down 11%. Ad spend was down 22% and registration down by 29%. In quarter one, the market was clearly entering the downturn of its normal cycle. Site traffic, brand spend and vehicle registration were all down across the big five European markets. Car manufacturers were fretting about the impact of EU emissions penalties and the threats of large fines. COVID-19 only moved front and center at the end of the quarter as it began to rage out of control. Lockdowns were implemented across each market at the beginning of mid-March, and in quarter two, as we know, things fell off a cliff. Visits were down 24%, ad spend down by 59%, and car registration down by 55%. The automotive sector initially saw traffic tumble in line with airlines and travel companies, as consumers focus on more immediate concerns like hunting online for groceries and toilet paper. Across Europe, the car industry effectively shut up shop. Advertising was pulled as outlets closed and vehicle registration consequently fell a disastrous and unprecedented minus 55%. Quarter three, at least the first two months for which we have data, offers some signs of recovery. Visits were up by 5%, ad spend was still down by 10%, but registration started to pick up. Traffic to car websites showed positive year-on-year -year growth and adverts reappeared. Car sales were down only 7%. Also, with many deliveries rolled out from Q2, it's hard to assess the true health of the car market at this point. And seasonality, too, did not follow usual patterns as staycation took precedence over foreign holidays and the lower traffic volume associated with summer was spread more evenly across late July and August. As you can see from this graph, France and Spain were the most impacted market. But within the overall picture, there were clear winners and losers. Car brands weathered the crisis with very different outcomes. Five brands in the big five saw their combined sales in July and August increase by more than 10% over the previous year. At the other end of the league table were five brands whose sales were down more than 20%. So what accounts for the difference in fortune? 
Analysis of the data can perhaps help us clarify the constituents of success. The first of these was the retention of online engagement. Of the top 10 brands in terms of registration performance in Q3, nine of them all retained or grew traffic above the sector average during quarter two. At the other end, more than half saw website traffic fall beyond the average. The spend data for the period gives a more mixed message. Six of the top 10 brands continue to advertise at a level greater than the sector average during Q2, but so too did five of the brands that fell into the bottom 10 in terms of Q3 sales outcome. Clearly, it was not business as usual. Spend did not necessarily lead to increased engagements or sales. As it being repeatedly stated, but then ignored in practical terms, this is a unique situation. The problem is medical, not economic, and the solution therefore cannot be lifted from the playbook from previous recession or downturns. The winners in this situation were the ones that were prepared for, or quickly adapted to, the unprecedented constraint the pandemic imposed, chiefly in the form of digital tools and workarounds to overcome the enforced closure of their retail network. So, of the top 10 winners, 8 brands offered live chat or video live chat with a product genius replicating the sales possibility denied by showroom closures. At the other end of the table, only 2 out of 10 offered some kind of live chat or engagement tool facilities. Moreover, half of the winners offered even more, a complete end-to-end -end online purchase facility whereby the sale can be negotiated and fulfilled using a suite of digital tools, including vehicle valuation, provision of finance, contract completion and delivery logistics. Only one of the worst performing brands offered such a facility. In the unique situation that COVID-19 has presented, the differentiator has been the capability to respond to consumers, interact with them and seamlessly move towards a transactional conclusion with using digital tools and bridges. So we've heard from Scott about the extreme volatility in the market in the first six months of the year. But what's it like to be at the sharp end of that? To be running digital for one of these big corporates who struggle to adapt to market conditions at the best of times. Right now, it was very urgent. We spoke to Marcus Casey, the head of digital and e-commerce at BMW Group, to find out what things he accelerated and how he overcame internal barriers to make change happen. Uh, so we have real, like in the airline business, you know, tailwind uh, in the, that we we got. Because I remember in the board that I was in, in a board meeting in, 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 in January, it was more like, okay, how do we do it? And what do we do? And so forth. And then in March, it was like, I got a call from our CEO, basically. Uh, it, it Just when are we going to do it? You know, when are we going to accelerate that change? Uh, specifically regarding, you know, the whole uh, purchase funnel for cars and uh, how do we boost our, our digital presence there even more. Yes, yes. And I mean, uh, you know, in crisis, normally budgets are cut and uh, resources are, um, you know, put together more or have to be reduced. Uh, but in our case, we actually got uh, additional funding in order to boost the program. We named it uh, Rapid Response, too, uh, which is a nice uh, way of, it's a kind of established itself as a brand name in the company, which is good. Uh, and yeah, no, we, we definitely got um, a big um, uh, boost in what we always wanted to do anyhow, but, you know, there was a bit, you know, traditional sales areas, a bit of a, a not reluctance, but, you know, doubt, you know, how does that work with the dealers and, you know, in a wholesale model, it's much more difficult to set up this, this journey in a digital way than let's say where I came from, um, you know, in my previous job, which was an agency model uh, where it was very easy to set up uh, digital sales. Uh, I mean, let's think about how long have people been buying online? I, I think I just recently saw on my Amazon account that now they tell you how long you've been a member, just like American Express, and on mine it said 2000. So, you know, it's 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 a long time ago. Um, and so also in in, 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 in industries like ours, uh, that trend has been going on for a long time, but it, 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 it always ended abruptly once you decided this is the car I'm interested in. And, you know, 
you are catapulted more into the 90s where there's a form and then you fill out the form and and then you know with good dealers you do get a follow-up quite quickly um, but there's been that it's just been in the inquiry phase where we were very much present Yeah, a great question and uh, something we ask ourselves every day, you know, because uh, even, I mean, you can see also the ratio between configured cars and sold cars is, there is a big discrepancy. So, I mean, if you configure a car, if you personalize your car, um, you're more in the in the funnel of, of, of purchasing one. But I, I think it's just that, um, you know, companies like ours, a company like ours uh, with such a enormous brand uh, recognition, brand name, people in Asia, if you wear a Louis Vuitton hat or a BMW cap, it's the same. I mean, is that's the appeal of the brand. I just had a, a discussion with someone who is in our event team and, you know, you do events in the mountains, you do sailing events, uh, you know, things like that, classical. I mean, now we're very, you know, we just announced that we're getting big into esports, which is, I think, a big area, which obviously I like a lot because it has that affinity towards digital already. And maybe you can connect much better the initiatives you do. Um, or if you know Black Widow uh, as a movie coming out and supporting things like that. So how do you connect those dots more? Uh, I mean, that's the fun thing about digital that it's more measurable. Uh, I think uh, the tools are all there in order to really know your customers quite well, um, even anonymously if they're not logged in. Uh, I think it's more difficult when you go outside of your own space. But again, I mean, with, with the technologies out there, I think a lot can be done. I always, I always tell my people, let's not reinvent the wheel. Uh, if others have done a good job at certain things, just copy it, you know? I mean, obviously you don't know all the proprietary information and all the details, but I think there's many, many providers out there who, who will help you to get there. So I would say we're, we're on the path, but definitely not there yet. And that's, and that's I think, the, the thing in car companies too, we have a lot of engineers and they're so proud of what they do. So. I mean, although there's a lot of benchmarking being done, which impressed me immensely when I joined the company, but sometimes then there's that pride factor. What I find interesting is that um, our website was very much positioned more as an information and uh, marketing platform. And I'm not even sure how well we did in the informational part sometimes, because we, coming from marketing, um, you often show beautiful pictures and, and, and so forth. You know, your showroom, your virtual showroom is more a, a beautiful brochure. And what we learned uh, from the data and from feedback and everything that customers want much more hard facts also. Um, they want to compare, they want to know if that car fits into their garage. Uh, so we're really changing the narrative there and, and becoming much more to the point, you know, also how do we integrate maybe other um, uh, sources? Because, I mean, there's so many sources out there, YouTube videos, um, the magazine you just showed me, you know, uh, how do we get the, that uh, together? So I think that's one thing that that's really changed. Um, and then I think what has fundamentally changed is now to continue that journey and say, not only am I interested in a car, but I can finish the entire process online if I want to. And, and uh, I think that's that's one of the fundamental ones. And and what we've also seen, and never forget, I mean, it's all about the car, but I mean, also for people who want to buy any accessories uh, or uh, what we have done is over the air sort of, um, products now. So I buy a, a car, a stock car, but then I want to add a um, navigation system or I want to add a high beam assistant, so things like that now you can buy over the air. So you can add that to your car, which is good because then, you know, in the past it was very difficult. You had to go to the dealer, you had to have it upgraded. You know, if you missed something at the point of order, it basically was done. 
I do believe that almost everything, even in a wholesale um, setup, is in place that you could buy your car from your couch. Because, I mean, let's think, I mean, I was lucky enough to put a little bit of stock into um, a doku sign or something. So, you know, you have those 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 providers out there that do all the e-signature part um, virtually. So, and I mean, you trade in and, and you can do that all. Issue is, in a wholesale model, you always have that pricing part, you know, because, I mean, you will never have you'll never have that final price or you could get close to it but you don't have you know price is determined by the dealer and that that makes it a bit more complicated but i think that that definitely is uh, possible and the road down the route i mean you just basically extend it module by module uh, that's you know you can go to down payment but you can do much more yeah no i totally i mean i feel myself as someone who's Transforming our organization and again. I want to be humble. I'm not the only one but from a from a product company to a service company And I mean, this is just one element of it, but it's a big one and it touches all parts of the organization And that's something that I thought was interesting too because if you're a product company you say here's my product I roll it out and then it just sells and uh, uh, That's something we really made it where it's not about having a chart with all these nice um, green uh, hooks, you know, we did it, we did it, we did it. It's about, we did it and is it working and what are we doing to optimize it and who's doing what in the process. I personally think that uh, what will have changed is that we will, that most of the sales will be digitally um, infused. I mean, let's be honest. Um, you can also create a much more digital experience at the dealer if you want to. Um, I think you will always also have retail. I mean, let's look at Am Apple. I mean, what's the reason they still have their shops? You know, you could say maybe they don't, wouldn't need them, but it's part of the brand experience. And I think that that will always be there or, or like luxury uh, goods. I mean, although they mostly sell retail. And so you will have that mixture. I think it's much more a seamless experience that you'll have. And I do think that you will have probably 30, 40% of your sales online. Some fascinating insights there from Marcus, not least the point he made about streamlining the consumer experience on the OEM site to make it more efficient. As an ex-journalist myself, I like the idea of leaving the media content to the experts, to the journalists, the road testers, who describe the product so well and allow the consumer to make the right decision. We now turn our attention to electric vehicles, which of course is an area where BMW have been very active themselves in the last few years, but also many other manufacturers and a number that is increasing. And in fact, going into this year, the new launches from people like Volkswagen, Tesla, Mini and Honda have resulted in a big increase in a consumer attention on EVs. And in fact, they're over indexing against their conventionally powered counterparts by up to three to one. That was a trend that continued into lockdown and there were various hypotheses as to why that might be. People stuck at home thinking more about their environment but also I think the fact that EVs were becoming more relevant to people. The ranges are extending, they're becoming cheaper in some instances and of course there's more consumer choice. And by the end of lockdown two countries introduced very aggressive consumer incentives to considerate EVs in Germany and France and we saw an instant increase in tra consumer traffic and interest that reflected the new affordability of those types of car. But it wasn't just Germany and France. In fact, the UK and Italy also saw a sustained increase in interest for EVs. We produce the Sophos 3 EV Index, which is a measure of how ready a country is for EV transition. And the UK performed very strongly in Q2. And in particular, the consumer interest element of the index increased by 30%, which gave the UK an overall score of 38 out of 100. But bear in mind, 100 rep would represent parity with non-EVs. So it shows just how far the UK and other European countries still has to go before they reach equal, an equal footing with EVs. The transition will only be truly cemented when there is more choice. And of course, there are SUV versions of EVs 
as we're starting to see with some of the manufacturers and notably VW this year. Now, before we leave you, we want to talk about retail, which has undergone a transformation in six months, both positive and negative. To do that, we want to look at the US, which is a retail hub like no other. It's the second biggest car market in the world, and of course has a very streamlined retail experience for consumers who are able to pick up cars on the day and do the paperwork at the desk. We know a true expert in US retail, and that's Ross Hill. He led Audi's US sales when they were growing exponentially and now advises retail groups on best practice in retail and of course digital. He's going to share some fascinating insights with us which we think are very relevant to the UK and European markets. And just for a perspective, I mean, there's 18,000 rooftops in the United States. And, and so you can imagine that the amount of, of adaptation uh, that has had to take place has varied dramatically from, from quite frankly, um, uh, very, very weak in terms of digital space to people that are highly progressive and that are in fact leading the way. So it's it's been a it's been an incredible. COVID has been a catalyst in the United States, particularly if you want to do as I like to refer to as you want to play offense and defense a lot of the change that took place in the earliest time of COVID were immediately defensive in nature. How do I save costs? How do I increase productivity? How do I keep my people safe? How do I keep my customers safe? Very, very defensive, very, very defensive moves. And then all of a sudden everybody realized, oh my God, I've got this incredible opportunity for a paradigm shift. I've got the opportunity to actually both lower my operating expenses and increase my productivity by just doing things differently. And that light bulb effect went on at a varying intensity and in varying locations all across the United States. What didn't go down was web traffic. Web traffic exploded, okay, uh, during during the shutdown, um, and 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 when you looked at it from a brand to brand basis, from a model to model basis, the amount of activity that that we had, you could see change dramatically. Normally, in the car business, there are certain day parts where web traffic spikes, um, and 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 your BDCs have got to be extremely well staffed and ready. That type of, of presence then now moved away from the early hours of coming to work and lunchtime into a full day's worth of activities. The same desire to be interactive, to do as you and I are doing right now, see each other, see facial expressions, catch the eyes, those kind, that's human and that's never going to go away. Okay, so the total digital experience, the let's let's call it this, the Amazonian retail experience, where you are clicking and buying. Okay, is it, it, in our industry at least, is 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 not anything that we're seeing anytime soon. Even though the customers are spending a great deal of time doing their research, they still want what we're calling confirmation. And as soon as there's any disconnect between what they've seen online and what they begin to experience as they're getting closer to the actual experience, any disconnect, that's where people are saying bye-bye. The Pew Research released a recent report that blew my mind. The headline states, and I'll read it. A majority of young adults in the U.S. live with their parents for the first time since the Great Depression. Now think of that. I'm telling you, if this cycle works the way that it did before, we're in 
for an explosion of, of economic activity as in, in, a, in, in, in a very, very short term. Because those people are going to form family units. They are going to be, go out on their own and they are going to spend a lot of money to do so. The first thing that, the, 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 that we are advising our retail clients on is to eliminate waste. One of the biggest things that we have seen, and we knew it going in because we were teaching it, we were training it, we were trying to eliminate waste all in loop. And waste to me was absolutely horrid. Lead conversion rates, okay? Absolutely, it, this didn't make any difference whether it was a vehicle sales or whether it was a service lane sale or a service appointment. We saw a huge opportunity to increase the connect rate with which retailers would in fact connect with people who inquired to do business with them. The failure rate in terms of answering telephone calls or answering them properly was a big leaky bucket. One dealer called me up from California and said, look, I think that I've got this thing knocked. I, I said, what is it done? He said, yeah, I, I think that what I wanna do here now is I know that I'm only gonna sell about 70, 75% of the business that I'm supposed to sell but I want to do it with 50% of my employee cost, okay? So that I make more money than I would have otherwise. And quite frankly, he had cracked the code. First of all, there's a couple of different sets of digital advice, devices that are available. One actually helps you with becoming very, very accurate in terms of market pricing. Uh, when you get to the point in time where you have uh, the ability to, to forecast uh, demand, you know, whether it's through an inventory acceleration program or whether it's through a situation where you're getting accurate, very accurate market appraisals for your trades. Those are the areas, quite frankly, that help you to price to the market much better than the 30-year-old used car manager that knows what Porsches are worth in Birmingham, Michigan. The old road to the sale is not dead, okay? It's just reprioritized, okay? If we began to go back and look at how, how, how I was trained when I was, you know, put in the car business, of a road to the sale that starts with prospecting and ends with de delivery follow-up, that was a linear process. Our customers and our brains, we finally realized our brains do not think in a linear fashion. OK, we might be at the introductory phase of something, but our brains are already looking three steps beyond. And what we have now is a spectrum of service. We're on one end of that spectrum. You have the customer that doesn't want anybody to touch them and doesn't want to talk to them. I want to do everything online. I want the Amazonian model on the other end of that spectrum. That same wealthy customer will desire to have personal service because they have so much choice available to them now. And so it's a spectrum and training the dealer and setting the dealers up so that they can do that spectrum with fewer sales, you know, face-to-face -face salespeople in a more advanced and user-friendly um, uh, uh, information tool is the key. What's going to make all this work? What's going to make all this work are going to be highly talented, capable people. Very few of the people who are at retail, I mean, I, I, it's a bad word to use, very few, but let's put it a significant number, really are clumsy with digitization. They, they, they really are. And they, and they need to become familiar with it. They need to become a, a, a good user. Okay. so that they can move through the data and the information that the customer really wants at the speed at which the customer wants to work, because that's the determining factor. The average length of time that it took to buy a car on a weekend was six hours. Six hours from door front to drive away, six hours, okay? 
whoa. And when you began to look at, at the why of that, it was just wasting the customer's time. Now what we know, based upon what we're seeing, is customers who come to that store want to be in and out and driving their car in less than one hour because they've already gone through a selection process. They know whether you've got it or you don't. So you've got to go into what we're calling confirmational selling. Confirm to the customers what they want. Find out really what they know and, and you can accelerate the process so much. So the speed to sale thing is going to increase dramatically and think of what that's going to do to the human dynamics at a dealership, you're going to need less people, you're going to need less space, all those things, these things that cost a lot of money are things that are going, we're going to change the nature of retail by just embracing new technology. Very interesting feedback from Ross Hill. I really like how he spoke about the opportunities this crisis is giving us to review our business model and how demographic might be impacted in the long term. I hope you have found this digital update insightful in the current context, we are not able to host our regular face-to-face -face conferences, but we want to make sure that we are able to keep you up to date with the latest trend in the automotive digital space. A big thank you to the Sophie Street team for this homemade video and looking forward to catching up with you in the near future. If you have any question or suggestion, please get in touch and in the meantime, take care. Fasten your seatbelts. Disruption is on its way.